Welcome to Jewish Cinematheque, where we meet some of the important faces involved with films that tackle aspects of the Jewish experience. Today, we meet filmmaker Sameh Zoabi, whose film Tel Aviv on Fire premiered this past year at the Venice and Toronto Film Festivals and is now opening theatrically across North America. Sameh, welcome to Jewish Cinematheque. Hi, it's you? great to have you here, and, and I, I, I love the film. Um, I had a chance to see it at the Toronto Film Festival. How, how has the reaction been uh, across, uh, across Israel? Uh, it was great. I, you know, we, we started in uh, our first test screening was in, at Haifa Film Festival. So we were in the main competition there, and we had a really solidly mixed audience of Palestinians and Israelis, and, and the laughters were even bigger than I expected from both sides and uh, the film did well. We won the best film award and we won best screenplay award which is uh, was, was a great deal for the film and now in June the film was released theatrically and uh, it played so well uh, among the both audience the same way. So tell, tell us about that I mean you know you grew up in Israel um, outside of Nazareth uh, your schooling what brought you into filmmaking? Well, you have to understand, I mean, it's, you know, there is, I mean, there is a sense of segregation of communities inside Israel. The Palestinian community, like in Iqsal, Nazareth, don't necessarily mingle, you know, with the Jewish-Israeli uh, community that much unless they have to. And, you know, I didn't grow up in, in watching movies because we didn't have a movie theater. So my upbringing was, you know, my father was a farmer, you know, I was the youngest of nine, so I... I wouldn't say that I, when I was seven, I saw this masterpiece of a film that suddenly I decided to become a filmmaker. You know, my upbringing to filmmaking is really self-education. I, I want to be a filmmaker? Is that what you wanted? Yes, I think, I, I, maybe even an actor, I don't know. It was like something, I didn't even know the difference, to be honest with you. I mean, it was just that feeling... You know, this, this world is interesting, but I wasn't sure what it is, really. You know, you said, I want to go to Tel Aviv University. So I didn't do a, a practical film study, so it was mostly theory. And that's where I start watching films from, over, over, you know, Italian cinema, British cinema, you know, French cinema. And I, gradually I start to see, wow, you know, this world of storytelling is so fascinating. And how, for someone who never been in France or in Italy, I still connect with these characters and feel the journey and I was like okay you know that's and that's where I decided to pursue my master's degree. It was a very peculiar situation for me because I was the only uh, Palestinian in the class. The only one? Uh, yes and and I have an accent in Hebrew so it was like always like it was a struggle a little bit to be myself fully because as soon as you open your mouth it's like you know and, and also a lot of the students were most of them post-army, traveled, seen films, and they are the students who, when they were seven, their father took them to see Star Wars. Gotcha. So it was a little bit, so I was really, I felt like I didn't fit. Even my stories did not make sense because I was not interested in what people thought about the Arab community, you know, for Tel Aviv, because Tel Aviv, is, you know, is a bubble in a sense. Like it's a bubble, but it's also a very liberal bubble. Very liberal bubble, but still a bubble that doesn't really... I mean, people don't spend enough time, let's say, with the Arab community inside. Right. And, and I think that, that kind of allowed me to realize that I need to be in a, bit, in a, in a different setting uh, to really understand uh, even my identity and my place as a filmmaker. So then you decided to come to New York, to Columbia. And at Columbia, because it was focused on narrative filmmaking, working with actors, and because I, it was very international. So I was the only, not the only one with an accent, <laughs> so all of a sudden. And everyone had a story to tell from different parts of the world. And my first short was Be Quiet, the one a price in Cannes. Uh, that tell, us, tell us about the film. Well, the film is, was, I, I started writing the film during the second intifada, you know, post uh, September 11, where, you know, the Palestinian, I realized that the Palestinian narrative is never really make it to the big screen. Even on the media, I mean, when you have CNN or Fox News, you rarely see a Palestinian talking about their experience. And if they do, the, almost the radicals always make it to the news. And that kind of like allowed me like to understand, wow, you know, I live in a world, I was in a, my own bubble of Excel, 
uh, and now I see the world is bigger, but right? your image, your story is not out there. And I said, you know what, I want to tell an intimate story, partially based on some truth and some story that I, I, I you know, it's a father-son story. But it's, it's a global, it's, it's, it's a very universal story of a father trying to raise his son in times of unrest, basically. Uh, so it has that universal theme set during the Intifada, the checkpoints. And, 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 uh, so for me, since then, and the way the film was received, even the, the reaction, not just, I would say, in the U.S., even the Israelis, you know, suddenly you see a different Palestinian. You see that the 90% of the population that never makes it to the news, which is the people who live their daily life trying to get by. Not everyone has a political agenda, as we know, right? not just in Palestine, but everywhere. I mean, right. people have personal agendas of uh, raising family, uh, bringing food to the table, getting married. You know, these are the things that I think preoccupy people in general. But that's, that face never make it to the big screen. And that was, for me, the revelation that I had through my short, which I think established the kind of films I've been making. Why comedy? Exactly, because it's, it's, you know, I thought I grew up, everyone is funny back home. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you've been in an Arab village and you sat uh, drinking tea or something. People laugh all the time. Nobody even, really... in, in, even in dire circumstance. Absolutely. This is how we, you know, you wake up in the morning and you have to see, see the light at the end of the tunnel and humor is, is the only way. And I, I always say it, you know, for me, humor is not an effort. Like, it's not like, oh, my God, I want to make a comedy about, about the reality. No, it's just the way I always saw the world, the way my family, my community, and I think, in general, Palestinians have a, a good sense of humor. And, you know, it's funny because I just had a screening in L.A. Uh, two days ago, and uh, one of the Israeli J Jewish audience said something. He says the, the, the Jewish community was... was was the comedians of the world for 2,000 years, and I feel that you guys are the next now. Because, wow. Because it's, it's when you feel you're under siege and you feel like you're helpless in a sense of, of feeling the pressure that comes to surround you, I think humor is, I mean, that's, you know, humor is one way to you know, survive in a sense in a reality like this. I mean, no wonder why Charlie Chaplin made you know, The di Dictator and, and, and many other filmmakers, Lubitsch making To Be or Not To Be. Uh, so this, I think, it becomes that way of functioning in a sense. So when I wanted to make a film about daily reality, about the common man, about characters that are not the, the victims or the fighters or they are the people who are in the middle, it, naturally humor is, 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 the, is the only way, I feel, for me. So you, you listen to the title, Tel Aviv on Fire, you see that it's set in 1967. All of a sudden, you're sitting back in your seat and you're saying, oh my gosh, we're going to have a film that's going to uh, be critical of Israel or critical of the Palestinians. It's going to dig into the conflict. But it does, but in a very humorous way. And it's, a, it's apparently a way that people are very comfortable with. Why is that? Well, I think because people are jaded. I think I feel like when I was in June, actually seeing people responding, and I see some of the comments in social media and stuff, and both Israelis and Palestinians, I think it, that the situation is so tragic, and when people live in it, uh, and they don't have a sense of leadership, like you know, if, I mean, take the last 20 years, nobody is talking about solutions. We are, you know, you know, the Israeli government and the PLO. At this moment, they, they, they're managing the situation. They are in the business of managing the occupation. Nobody is really in the business of solving it or giving a vision. So people are living in that reality for 20 years of, I don't want to deal. I don't want to engage in this. And I, so suddenly you give them a, a glimpse of, in the film, which I see, they see a glimpse of hope that they remember. I mean, the, the, in the film, and, and, and I'm going to ask you to just describe it in a bit, in a bit but you have a, a, an intimate, close relationship between a Palestinian and Israeli, which in a certain sense can or maybe can't long-term exist. Tell us about the film. Well, the film is, you know, is about a, a Palestinian TV show called Tel Aviv on Fire, which deals with the 67 war. Uh, it's, it's more, it's like a soap, soap opera. A soap opera, yeah. And it's, um, it's you know, it's a, soap operas are over-exaggerated. Uh, uh, 
uh, form, you know, with the dialogue, with the acting. So it has that color. But it's set in 67. You it's sit there and you watch it and you just laugh as you're watching the soap opera behind the scenes taking place. It's, yeah. it's, it's great. Absolutely. So the story of the soap is about a, a Palestinian woman who is a refugee uh, if, who comes from Paris uh, to, spy, to spy before the six, seven, uh, 1967 war. And her mission is to seduce an Israeli general to get secrets before the war, so to prevent the fall of Jerusalem. Now, my film is, is about a guy who works as a production assistant in the film who he lives in Jerusalem and works in Ramallah. When he was going back home, he was stopped at a checkpoint. I'm not going to reveal why. Uh, but he meets this Israeli commander who realizes, oh, this guy works on Tel Aviv on fire, and his, his wife is a big fan of the show. So you, this was a show that was being watched by both Palestinians and Israelis in, the, in, in the broader film. It, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And so it's he, a popular It's a very popular, popular show, soap. And, and the Israeli soldier watches it, but he's in denial because he thinks soap opera are made for women. But he's, of course, he, he, he watches it as well. So she was fascinated all of a sudden to meet this guy who you know pretended to be a writer on the show he's not so Asi the Israeli soldier basically when he realized that he has the power to maybe influence the show he starts to use Salam to go push for another ending to the show that sort of uh, appeased the Israelis more than the Palestinians so and and, and of course the Palestinian uh, or Arab uh, financiers of the show they're not gonna accept the ending that the Israeli is offering so so we have Salam is caught in the middle uh, between trying to please everybody, which is, you know, in many ways, this has been the story of my life. I, I, I can only imagine. <laughs> there you are caught. You're, you're an Israeli filmmaker. You're a Palestinian filmmaker. You're making films that are being sponsored and, and in part paid for by the Israeli government. So, you know, on one side, how do the Palestinians look at this? You know, who is this guy and how do the Israelis look at you? Are well, you, you are that person? Absolutely. I mean, I, <laughs> I, you know, the idea of the film, I mean, starts to feel real. I mean, you know, you, you have ideas for movies, but, you know, you don't think about it that it's going to become a movie. Because when you have that idea, you know that you have to invest at least three years, four years for this to happen. And, and you have to really believe in it. And I was looking for that spine that will connect me to that story. Because uh, overall, it's a very broad comedy, but I needed that. You know, I think that personal touch, which also could bring the politics and could bring the different layers and not just a comedy, which is what, what exists in the film, which is entertainment and, and talking it's about something. It's a farce. It's a satire. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's actually a, a, a film that delves into the conflict, but in a very unusual and powerful way. Let, let's take a moment now and, and look at a clip uh, from the film Tel Aviv on Fire. מה עשית בגדה? תענה! אני עובד בסדרת טלוויזיה ברמאללה. איזה סדרה? מה השם שלה? תל אביב על האש. מה, אתה שחקן אתה? לא, 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 אני עובד על הדיאלוגים. קח. בוא נצטט את זה. באוטו. שמות של מתקנים צבאיים, של אנשי צבא. זה התסריט לפרק הבא. זה טלוויזיה. זה הערות שלי. אתה כתבת את זה? כן, כן, ברור. אתה את הסרטי של תל אביב על האש? כן. כן. אה, כן? אז איך קוראים למרגלת שיש לה מסעדה? רחל. ולמאיפה שלה? איזה? הערבי, המחבל זה ששלח אותה. אה, מרואן. והקצין הישראלי? יהודה אידלמן, אלוף אידלמן. יהודה אידלמן, כן. יהודה. דוד! דוד, מה אתה יודע? הכנסת לי סלב פה עכשיו. הערבי הזה זה זה שכותב את תל אביב על האש. אתה מכיר את הסדרה? ראיתי פעם, זה אנטישמי. לא בסדר, תל אביב על האש קוראים לזה. מה ציפית? שזה יהיה ציוני? So, Samba, where did the idea come from? Well, you know, it's, the, the film itself, I mean, 
starts to talk to me when I realize that every time, since my Be Quiet, since my short, every time I made a movie, I was always been under the microscope. That know? was 14 years ago. Yes, and it still continues until now, even after making the film. Under the microscope by, by, by three people. Three, the three, <laughs> three, three, three populations, parties. which are? To make movies, you, you know, because I'm Israeli citizen as well, so I have access to the Israeli fund, which helped me to also access the European funds to make the films. You know, our, our kind of movies is always a co-production. So every time you make a film, you know, the Israelis are going to give you money, but they want to make sure you're not turning too Palestinian on them. And we've seen a lot of controversials about these issues many times. Even Israeli filmmakers are it, uh, getting in trouble because they're considered to be too pro-Palestinian. Exactly. So there's always that... You Israeli know, Jewish filmmakers. Yes, absolutely. I mean, there's that part that are always going to put you in check. Are you, be, are you with us or against us? And then when you do, and then the Palestinian Arab population would look, okay, is he taking money from the Israeli? Did he give up his, his identity? Is he selling out? And then, of course, the Europeans, when you go there, they don't want to have a stand. They don't want to be, <laughs> they don't want to get in trouble with the Israelis or with the Palestinians. So they kind of always work their, their way of trying to have a you know, more balanced material. So every time I, I do something, I'm like, always happens the same thing, where you have that kind of, you know, conscious, so, you, know, this more, you know, I guess there's a moral conscious to it, because who do you represent in times of unrest and identities and... Uh, and of course, occupation still exists, and there's no sense of two-state solutions. So you are in that, on, the th on a thin line of you could upset either side for whatever you say or do. Because every time you make a movie, it's like, oh, what, what does this ending mean? Is he with us or against us? That that's always comes in any script I wrote or any film I made. And then I was like, wow, that's a great idea for a movie. <laughs> so it almost starts to feel like, you know, Salam is trapped in that, in that reality. And I, I think it's very important through that lens I was able to visit through the show, the history of 67, and how it's affecting the reality nowadays. And then try to give a, a sense of, through the characters and through that connection that happened between Asi and Salam, is to create a sense of, I would say, you know, a lens to the future of possibility. Because the reality as is, is not going to get us anywhere. Right. And as a filmmaker, do you want to make a film to continue that rift that already exists and create a film that exactly what the politicians are doing now, which is creating a sense of walls, disconnect, checkpoints, where a place where Israelis and Palestinians don't meet, which is very comfortable to keep a conflict like that. So if I make a film that is us against them, or you know, it's always gonna you serving the status quo. And for me, I think this is where my I guess my perspective on the conflict starts to come through my films is that we have to break the status quo. The status quo is not gonna lead us anywhere. So I had to uh, you know bring that through humor to remind people that we are living in a in a very tragic reality where disconnect is is a big part of it, and we need to break that, you know. So it's I mean, interesting, because in, in the film, you push a lot of buttons. Yeah. I mean, you, you talk <laughs> about Zionism, but at the same time, the audience is sitting there and laughing. Yeah. Uh, you talk about the Holocaust, which is not a subject easily laughed about. Um, uh, Anti-Semitism, tough issues. Yeah. Um, the treatment of Palestinians, and yet, you do it in such a sensitive way that you really open up, I, I believe, some of the issues that you're talking about. The question is, will your Palestinian audience at home, when they see the film, react in the same way as the Israelis have? And, and you're saying they have. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the film is very, you know, it's, you know, as they say, you know, Mark Twain said, if you, uh, if you always tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything or you don't have to make up anything to, to justify yourself. I mean, the truth is, is clear. I mean, there, it's not a normal situation. I mean, there is occupation. There is a, a dynamic of oppressed and oppressor. I mean, it's very clear in a daily basis. Now, we can always justify, oh, but there's on both sides, there's radical, there's this, but that's fine. We can go into these discussions, but what is, what is the vision? Is anyone now, I mean, in the last 20 years, 
in the Israeli government leading this whole thing because they have more sort of power. He's talking about peace as, as, as a way of getting yeah, people together. You know, it's, so it's, it's a, a very You have it really, it's, it's a t tragic situation from right, both sides. Exactly, and I think, I think that's what I think you, both Palestinians and Israelis see. They see the sort of a, the, the, the humor, which is a very common, you know, common for both people. So they connect to that, but also they connect that, wow, this is absurd that you would, the fact is such a, such a far-fetched idea that an Israeli soldier would want to change a TV show. I mean, if you want to bring it to reality. Especially a TV show that's a Palestinian exactly, TV show. Exactly, but, but people accept it because it's the, the place becomes so not normal <laughs> that you can take this and go with it. You know, there was, there was I'm just to, you know, back to that idea. There was a time uh, where Israeli TV channels played every Friday an Egyptian film at 7 o'clock. And that's the time when Arabs and, and Jews watched the same film for years. So, so now they don't. And that was kind of like, you know, that's why people, you know, say, oh, you know, it's not, you know, now it doesn't happen, but, you know, when you watch the film, you're not going to think it's, uh, it's not real or possible because I think people still talk about it. And for me, that sentiment of people longing for a normalcy and, and, a, and a place to just end the conflict is what draws people, both sides, to the film. Because we are, everyone wants it. I mean, who doesn't want a normal life? Who doesn't, doesn't want to ha wake up and have equal opportunities to grow, raise family? I mean, I think we all want it. Absolutely. And we can't deprive one people from that basic human need. And my film is just talking about this. I was talking me, about let that. Me, let me ask you, you know, at the Haifa Film Festival, film one, best film of the festival, you had Palestinians and Israelis sitting side by side. How was that for you? I, had, I expected it. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm making a... I knew. Nobody was screaming from the audience, no. it's anti-Israel, it's anti-Palestinian? No. 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 So and far you don't no. expect that to happen, you know, when you return home, you don't expect some fringe element, some radical element to turn around and say, you're a cop out, you're, you're, you're making films funded by the Israeli government. And the very fact is, why is the Israeli government funding this? If Well, because, you know, thank God we still have people who run the fund are filmmakers, who are creators, who read scripts and see them for its potential. I mean, you know, if, if we... And that's what the fear that is happening now with the current government is they're trying to strip that away from the art from the artist community. I mean, they're trying to be the one deciding what films to fund or not. And I think that will be the end of democracy, which is what, where it's heading, which never There's existed a, in, the, is, in the, yeah. anyway. There I mean, is that tension. Yeah. Uh, and, yet, if, and yet they do see you as an Israeli, a Palestinian Israeli, but still an Israeli wanting to express yourself and needing... Uh, Creative. How is how are the Israeli filmmakers that you've worked with? How has how's their reaction been? Have they been supportive of what you do? And what about your Palestinian filmmaker colleagues? You know, I, I have to tell you the truth. I mean, you can't please everybody. I'm sure there's people, especially in, in in the field of film. You know, people who like your work. They have the, they have the sentiment. In, in the, you know, it could be an artistic. It doesn't have to be political. So I, I can't tell, but all I know is anyone that's seen the film and expressed, you know, from, from both sides, expressed really, I mean, you know, when you were in Toronto, there was a lot of, you know, Arab, not just Palestinian, Arab filmmakers in general from Syria, right. from, right. from Egypt, and they all appreciated the film because it's also a perspective that they haven't seen about the Palestinian. Right. Uh, as I said, it's a very truthful reality. There's nothing... And the, and the Israelis, I mean, you'll have some people who think, I'll tell you an example. I mean, you know, when the film came out and there was an article saying, uh, in one of the major newspapers saying, the headline saying, uh, a film that makes uh, fun of the occupation, or no, makes a comedy about the occupation. And you see in the comments of people responding, say, what occupation are you talking about? There's no, there's no Palestinians, there's no occupation. So this is another narrative that goes from that part of extremes. And I always say, I mean, you know, we have, I mean, that's what happened a little bit at, at the beginning of Oslo, where suddenly Israelis changed the, their perspective of saying, oh, Palestinians did exist there before, before they said they never existed. 
And in Oslo, we start talking, using the word Palestinian more often. Right. Let now me, people me, want to go back to that day of not, of not acknowledging. So it, it goes both ways. There are those people. And, but that's why I, those people make it to Fox News and other news to talk right. about. But, right. but the 90% who really want a normal life, that's what, what, what I care about. What about your seven siblings? They love the film. They, they, and have they had a chance? You know, one of the things you've spoken about in the past is the fact that you had an opportunity to see Israelis who are not soldiers. You, you studied with Israelis. You were on the streets of Tel Aviv. Um, was that also the case with your siblings? Did they have a chance to break out? Or are they just, you know, again, like you were as a youth, just in Nazareth and in the village and really not going beyond that? I would say, actually, maybe my older brothers had more contact than I did, mm -hmm. which was interesting. Uh, you know, my father was a farmer, and he worked like with a lot of farmers in the kibbutz, and we had them come over. We used to go to the kibbutz. So I had maybe more memories of that back and forth, uh, you know, uh, a little bit. Now, that's what I'm saying exactly now, that the disconnect is much bigger. Uh, you know what I mean? So that's why maybe like the sentiment that I'm bringing is something that I, you know, uh, it is, is we, we need to acknowledge each other identity in this. There's no question. no question. And in order to move forward. Right. And, uh, but that's the thing, I mean, you know, talking about the conflict in a time that nobody wants to see it or deal with it, it you have to find another creative way to bring them back. Do you and, think that this film will do that? will open the discussion. Absolutely, and I see it happening. I think, you know, people longing for that discussion to be opened again, and you know, and you see, like last election in Israel was very heated because I think people are, uh, are looking for a different change. I think they, they need, a, they need uh, a feeling that this is gonna be okay, and we could, and, and people in the middle sometimes feel, feel helpless, and that's what my film is, dealing with these people in the middle. So I'm, I'm hopeful, Sami, that, that this is a film that will raise that discussion um, and will give an opportunity for both Israelis and Palestinians to laugh and dig in and, and discuss Absolutely. and dialogue. And I wish you much success with, with a, a powerful film, Tel Aviv on Fire, and uh, I wish you well for the future. Thank you. I appreciate it. All the best. Thank you. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double chai, or more. Simply visit the JBS website at jbstv.org and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please, indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check to JBS, P.O. Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.